Mike here and we're gonna go ahead it's hard to be as cool as these guys but we're gonna go ahead and show you them driving their bikes up and down uh, the highway here on Arizona Sidewinder and then we're gonna take our truck up there and go for the whole distance so you can see the whole ride this is an ultimate motorcycle ride or classic car truck ride and here's the first part we're starting off at Cool Springs gonna be heading towards Oakland so get ready, we're 191 curves in 8 miles. That is the Arizona Sidewinder. But right now just kick back and enjoy the ride. Here we go, and we are heading. This is uh, Cool Springs, Arizona. So, kind of pass by it here, a little let you see. It's a real fun stop on historic Route 66. Got some cool cars and trucks out there. And that's kind of your starting point. You go a little further, there's a little straight highway, but then you're going to start getting the curves. There's 191 curves in eight miles, and it's called the Arizona Sidewinder. It's on historic Route 66. Uh, today we did to take you on a cruise here. It kind of lets you see the whole ride. This is under our truck I know we're not as cool as those motorcycle guys taking it, but This will let you see the ride pretty easy a little hard to get a camera on the bikes. So But we're basically started this morning uh, It's Sunday morning and uh, or Saturday morning. I'm sorry, and it was like 30 degrees outside in Chino Valley where we live <laughs> Yeah, I'm talking to my wife at breakfast. She's a real good cook eating breakfast. And she's like, I want to go somewhere where it's warm. So next thing we know, we hop in the truck and uh, our story begins. We're just starting off heading towards uh, Oatman, Arizona. And of course I brought my camera and uh, all that fun stuff. So I can take a little video while we do it so I can share it with all you folks. Now there's 191 curves here. This road, you need to be aware of a couple different things when you're on this road. There's burrows that are often on the roads. So you need to be careful. They are king of the roads. They own it. Don't hit them. You'll tick a lot of people off if you do, not to mention not good for you either. Uh, there is also on this road, you need to watch. There are a lot of steep cliffs, edges without any uh, boundaries. And also please subscribe to our channel. Help us out if you can. This is my uh, new channel. I do have a secondary channel, a second channel that is uh, all about junkyards. And so if you like that, check that out too. Uh, now we're cruising along down here. I did speed the videos up just a little bit, but we are doing the speed limit at all times here. It's pretty important you do because you never know when somebody's going to come in your lane. And this road is narrow and there's a lot of steep cliffs and drop offs at a lot of places with no guardrails. So just keep that in mind and uh, but if you got a motorcycle this is going to be one of the ultimate rides uh, this may be Yarnell Hill but this one is actually I think a little more exciting uh, just taking this ride up now 
my camera sometimes is going all over the place a little bit. The truck was always in our lane, always doing the speed limit, so just keep that in mind. But we headed on down here, and we're pretty excited. The weather's beautiful. It's about 60-some degrees, so it's a beautiful day out. And we're driving by. I had to go through and make a stop back to the house after I got a quarter mile away because I had forgotten my pad. I have an extra pad that kind of helps keep me high enough so my knees and stuff don't bug me too much. It's our small truck. I'm a big guy. You know how that goes. But finally did all that. Then we were finally off again and then had to stop at Maverick because Maverick always has the good water and the. So I dropped their deli down there. It has some pretty good food. We hit that and we were on the road heading up here. Like I said, it's pretty crazy on the the turns up here. It's beautiful, beautiful country. And I was just lucky I was in the passenger seat, so I actually didn't have to worry about the driving. But you've got drop-offs anywhere from 150 to 150, 200 feet a lot of places. This was uh, old uh, historic route, or the old U.S. Highway 66 is what it was. And I believe... I'm not sure if it got bypassed. It, it got bypassed in the early 50s, okay? I don't know if it was 52, 54, I'm, I'm not sure. But I-40 bypassed it early because, honestly, for a lot of traffic and for trucks and stuff, this road was just a little scary. Also, if you're coming up here, you're not allowed to bring, have anything over 40 feet. So if you've hauling a big trailer or something, this is not the road for you. If you want to go ahead and check out Oatman, come from the Tupac side, and uh, that's probably the best way. Uh, that's also kind of a neat little trip when you go through. You can come up here and go to Oatman, and then you can also go to Topak and check that out, and they've got the Last Trails Bridge over there, uh, which was in the movie The Grapes of Wrath. It's going over the Colorado, right on the Colorado border. And also if it's summertime or springtime, you can actually rent like jet skis, boats, all sorts of stuff, uh, Topox on the Colorado River. And they also have a really neat nightclub there that I saw that's right on the river. Or, can't, well, I don't know what, nightclub, bar, I'm not sure whatever you want to call it, but it was really cool. It even had swimming pools and everything, and you're just watching the people in the boats out there on the Colorado River. So that's a really neat uh Way to uh, check out Route 66 if you want. You know, go all the way down there and just enjoy yourself. Now, Oatman was uh, pretty famous. It was gold mining. They went through in the early 1900s. Uh, they found gold here. And they took millions of dollars worth of gold out here. As a matter of fact, it was a big, pretty big town um, at the time. And what's... Now, one of the ways uh, they've got, actually, the name Oatman actually came from one of the Oatman girls. Uh, and that was, I think it was Olive Oatman. And she was from Illinois. And what had happened is that, oh, well, here we're at Sid Grease Pass right there. 3,550 feet, I think, elevation. But... Anyway, what happened, she'd gotten her, a lot of her family had gotten killed and massacred, um by uh i'm not sure which tribe but anyway she was uh captured and she was finally released later on she's pretty famous because if you ever see a picture she's got like tattoos on her chin and stuff uh but that's actually they decided to name the town after her this was actually after her death i think it was in early 1900 something like that they at one point even had a rail line uh, it only lasted for one year till it got washed out, but they were actually going all the way like to the Colorado River from up here. Uh, that was pretty amazing for a while. They had a lot of, I'm not sure how many miners and stuff, but they had a ton of people up in this town. So it was pretty cool that way. Uh, you'll also see, if you keep an eye out, um, at some of these different places, like I said, you see the Watch the Burrow side. But there's, on the side, especially by the mine, you'll see a big mine. And there's some pretty cool, uh, you'll see the old buildings the miners and stuff used. And just look at the views out there. I mean, they're gorgeous. But that's also, you can look, that's a long ways down. So you need to be careful. Make sure you stay in your lane. But, I mean, can you just feel it getting on your bike and, and taking this? I mean, 
but I tell you what, I, I could definitely feel the thrill of doing something like this. I mean, just uh, cruising down here in this pound of the pipes and wind in your hair and going for it. It'd be a lot of fun on that. Now, one thing I was also going to, or I'm also going to show you when we get up there is they are famous for their burrows. They have all tons of burrows that you can feed. You only never feed them apples or anything like that. They only need to eat, like the grass and uh, they have pellets or cubes that are grass or alfalfa in the stores. Please do not feed them anything else. The sugar in the fruit and a lot of that other stuff is really, really bad for them and actually can kill the burrow. So don't do that, please. And the scenery up here, the mountains are just gorgeous. I mean, you kind of see there's a motorcycler right there checking it out. You know, get a couple of your buddies and come on up. You'll have to excuse the reflection on the glare there. Try to catch all 191 curves. I don't know. I got most of them, I think. I might have missed a couple. It's possible. But just kind of give you an idea of how twisty and turny. I mean, there's actually a, they have they have a, a corner which is what dead man's uh, dead man's curve, and it's when you see the turn, you'll understand why they call it that. Big straight. There's a historic Route 66 sign. You can see it's a scenic drive here, and making a few more turns. And you can, like I said, the, this road is narrow. I think this is Dead Man's Curve right here, I believe. I'm not sure. I kind of lose track. But you can see a lot of the mining. Those are the tailings from the mines. And just past the mines here, I know there are a couple buildings. Sorry, I think it's going kind of fast sometimes in the truck. It, but uh, there is some buildings where you see some buildings from the 1900s that uh, were places the uh, miners worked or stayed on the sides here. I don't know how well though. I don't think they're going to show up really well, but we're just going by so fast. But they are here if you look for them. And there's actually several active gold mines here still. You know, since the price of gold's gone up, it actually makes it pretty worthwhile for a lot of these guys. There's one of the deals on the left right there. And I'll have some other videos out where I can really get down in detail I just the purpose of this video really was to kind of show you a few things and just to show you the ride on it I said sorry if it's a little bit busy but I had to kind of try to shorten it down just a little bit and we'll be coming up to Oatman not too long just kind of Looking at the desert scenery here. It's a little cooler. It's about 10 degrees cooler than Phoenix or any of those other desert like the Colorado River. So since it's about that 3,000 foot plus elevation, it stays a little nicer. And there's even been a couple movies they did up here. And I believe Clark Gable, this was a favorite place of his. Uh, their honeymoon was here in the Oatman Hotel, I believe. There is, uh, I don't believe there's any places to actually stay in Oatman, so you have to kind of stay around the area. And if you're taking a, like I said, this is not a place to haul a truck with a big art with a big trailer or anything. You, it's too tight of turns on everything. And you can even see when we're coming in here, some of these people are getting in other people's lanes, so you really got to watch that. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's just exciting just driving down here in the history. They've had this at one time. This was like all, but it was back in dirt. I saw some photos. It was just solid, like covered wagons, like a big train of covered wagons was one of the photos I saw, which was pretty cool. Uh, they actually used a lot of the uh, burrows for hauling. Uh, that was actually the preferred. They didn't they they were uh, especially they especially they were started young they were very well trained and the burrows were really good and they could haul a lot for their weight they could eat a lot of vegetation off the desert a lot of times and uh, didn't have too many issues with them they'd haul teams of 
there's tons of them up here to go ahead and bring stuff by. You're kind of heading down a little bit. I think we're getting close into Oatman here. Just like you see the mountains. Here we go. Yeah, that's Oatman in the distance. In the summertime, if you are going to do this in the summertime, it is going to get warm down here. So I recommend going very early in the morning if you get a chance. You know, go at 5, 6 a.m. in the morning um, when it's cooler because it, it can get pretty warm down here in the summer months for sure. Not as hot as Phoenix, but still pretty hot. And it definitely hits over 100 pretty often. So Now here's the coming into Oatman on the outskirts. See, and actually, that spot right there on the left, I believe that's where uh, Walter the Orphan Donkey uh, or Orphan Burrow is from. I think that's his pens right up there. I believe you're kind of slow and you gotta take it slow going through town. There's a lot of people everywhere, so you really gotta watch it. But I would really recommend going all the way to uh, Kopak and checking that out and then even looking at the bridge a little past there and then maybe even just coming back I mean you can't get too much of it really uh, you can come back on I-40 but you can also just take this trip this road right back if you want to uh, and then Lake Havasu is also another good stop you can go from there so you can kind of continue on several different places I'll have a lot of people go down through the Colorado, go to Lake Havasu, um, Parker, and that's a pretty nice drive too. I know when we were talking to the guys earlier that you saw on the motorcycles, uh, they were, I used to live in Yardell and we were talking about, they're actually going to a big bike, I think it was a big bike uh, meeting or jamboree or something in uh, Wickenburg, I think, coming up. And they're going to go down to that and... I told them make sure they take the Yarnell Hill because that's definitely a fun one. We got a bike. And that's another one. I'll be doing a video of that a little later on. Now here's the old town. There's the Oatman Hotel. I believe that was built in 1902, I believe. You'll see, like I said, you got to take it real slow going through town. But there's a lot of neat stuff here. A lot of fun places to shop. You can buy feed to go ahead and feed the burrows and it's just a it's a really cool place on, on Route 66 but you got a classic car, classic truck, motorcycle this ride is you know what you want to do, you got a classic car, you roll those windows down, crank the tunes and just enjoy the ride the same thing with the bikes, motorcycles, just get out here and enjoy it And the boroughs are supposed to be all over town. It just depends on where they're at and how many there are. But anytime there's up to 10 or 12 of them in town a lot of times. And if you keep going straight here, that was the town. There's still a few things up here, but this will take you into Topak. Now here's some of the fun boroughs. So we'll let them go ahead. We're feeding a few of the boroughs. And they're pretty friendly. Uh, one thing up here is do not bring dogs around the boroughs. Uh, the burrows treat dogs as predators. Now, you ever just gotten that itch you just can't quite get? Well, this guy's got that itch and he just can't quite scratch it. He's a trying hard. I actually tried to help him out. He was grateful for me later on, but he's got that sign. He's going to get that itch real good there. <laughs> We've all had that one, you know, where you got to back against that doorway and kind of scratch that back a little bit. <sighs> he, he, he's got that donkey itch right there. Oh, there's a little food for him. There's one of the baby donks. And they're called burrows because they're actually considered wild. But funny fact is, all burrows are donkeys, but not all donkeys are burrows. And check out this next video.